traveled all the way to Ireland for the first stop of the LZ World Tour at Mandela Park, which is Ireland's largest racetrack. The event was put on by Drift Games and they host so many drift events all over Europe. Our friend Dave Egan is the founder of Drift Games and he has been the voice of European drifting for almost 10 years. Dave and the crew worked really hard to put together the new Drift Games headquarters and showroom. We were the first people to actually check it out. If you enjoy our YouTube videos and have been wondering how you can help support their creation, consider joining the Haggerty Drivers Club, which includes a subscription to Haggerty Magazine, unlimited access to our valuation tool, exclusive offers and rewards with reputable brands, 24 seven roadside assistance with flatbed towing, early access and VIP perks to select Haggerty member events, and unlimited classified listings with no additional fees. You can find the link in the description below. Okay. So first impression, I mean, I mean we're, I'm not even mic'd up. We literally just walked in here. If you didn't know this existed, if you're just a car enthusiast that opens the door, walks into this warehouse, you wouldn't even know what to think. Like, how is it that something like this exists? So crazy. You have a bunch of 7-Eleven stuff here. I'm surprised you didn't make one of them a 7-Eleven. We could have, but a 7-Eleven isn't something we have here. And then also, we have to have a bar if it's an Irish garage. Oh, so yeah, of course. It was, Adam O'Connor works for me, and he yeah. loves like drinking pints yeah. in Guinness, so we just said O'Connor's bar. Th this is really cool right here. Yeah. Like, I, I, I saw pictures of this place and a couple quick video clips, but honestly, none of that material does justice when you walk through that door, which by the way, the hallway and the steps, totally inconspicuous, does not give away anything. That's what we wanted because we, we don't, it's not public access every day and we wanted it to just seem on the outside like it was just an office block or something up here that people would almost go, I know it's up there, but it can't be up here. Yeah, very nondescript. Pull up here, a couple cars outside, doesn't really give away too much, no. but when you walk up those stairs, you open that door, it looks like you walked from outside back to outside. <laughs> yeah, that was the idea. Just went to Universal Studios once and saw a road that was painted like this, and I went, oh, what if you just did that inside? And then, because Ireland rains all the time, because it's so difficult to shoot nice car content, this whole place came from us having, we still have a workshop separate to here, which all the dirty work happens, like the engines and the fiberglass and all that. And we said, we want a showroom, we want an office. And we also want a studio. And we also want nice lighting. And then why don't we do this? And then it all just progressed, progressed, progressed from one idea. So six months ago, this didn't even <laughs> exist as a concept, this whole place. And so in this configuration, how long has it been? Like, like how this. long have you had it like this? As it looks right now? Yes. About seven hours. Because That's it? Like two weeks ago, it was kind of finished, but we were still putting finishing touches on it like this morning. So we're pretty much your first guests yep. to see it actually completed. The deadline was the LZ World Tour event because we knew everybody would be in town, but I don't, not even regardless of the publicity, but you always have to have a deadline because if you don't, it's like a project car, it just keeps going and going and going. So I think it kind of motivated everybody who was building and helping us with it to get it done in time. And then a lot of these ideas weren't in the original plan. They just kind of naturally progressed as we went through saying, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did this, or wouldn't it be cool if we did that? I've just never seen anything like this. The, the cool thing to me is that this is your workspace. You guys built like this cool little Starbucks uh, inspiration, little coffee shop. No, it's nothing to do. I don't know where you got that impression from. <laughs> but you, <laughs> you look outside of the window and it's like a, a street, like an alley out of some dream car world. You even have a gutter here? So this is, why this is here is actually a very not fun thing to talk about. So this room, this entire room that you're in, was a fridge. So that's why it's super insulated. So this was actually a meat processing factory. So in this room, there would have been tons of meat getting grinded up, and this is actually to power wash all the blood off the floor. So this, 
now becomes car wash perfect because you can wash and it all goes out the side of the building. I mean, but this could be any road yeah, too. Like, exactly. You know, it's just like a great. But the floor originally road. was red, which was really horrible, and then these were red, so we painted everything and got it all that way. But definitely, like the ghosts of some cows, um, we're, we're expecting we're going to hear at night here. But it's uh, <laughs> definitely a really weird repurposing of a building. So. They t took the idea of taking this huge building, making it into eight different car businesses, and then we took this space, initially just a storage, and obviously it escalated to being uh, an office, a shooting area, and now sort of a workshop as well. It, I mean, it legitimately looks like a street. Yep. There's no question about it. You have the brick, you have the sidewalk, you have the perfect road markers, yeah. you even have a crosswalk. Yeah, and the guy, Darren, who built this, uh, that was said was one of the toughest things in here was to get the measurements all right for all of those line markings. And the amazing thing is that the guy who built all this with my imagination and his imagination, he owns this car. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, nine and six. Yep, with the okay. old new kit. This that, is nice. And he, so he built it with me, so you can see his imagination on cars. He had a bit more than a regular contractor would have. And then his son also works for me, so that's his son's car. So oh basically these guys are, we were like two crews for a long time that we were always one-upping each other building cars in Ireland, like show cars. And then it ended up that Craig came working for us because he's 19 and he wanted to build like cars and do that stuff. And then his dad was obviously interested in the project. So we, all car guys, everything, the electricians, people who did the floors, everyone was a drifter, a car guy, and that was their day job. So they came here with a lot more love, passion and imagination than say someone you just hire off the street. Let's check out your podcast studio. I may have tagged you already here. <laughs> it's fine. You go for it. That's what this was for. So what was the story behind oh, this? Larry, this is, this is, the fact that you're covering this on your channel, is, is, I'm losing a lot of bets here. So Josh, who's our videographer, I said, we're, we're building this new place. We need a podcast studio. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, all I've got to give you is like 2,000 euro, make it happen. And I thought he was going to go get like, wood and he's going to build a little room and then this thing arrives on the trailer. I mean in the worst condition you can ever imagine. Spiders, rust, everything. This might look like a cool patina to you but when we got it it was just abandoned in a hedge. It was like bad state. He went then and took, I think he bought it for a thousand euro and he kitted it all out for a thousand euro, like built everything himself. And again I get his point, he was like a room is a boring thing but this is kind of like an actual funny thing to look at. We didn't have to mind it. Like we dragged it in here. So we cut the floor flat so that it would sit in the floor. And then we took the engine out. It actually had a five cylinder Audi engine in, which we gave to Darren McNamara. So we made some of the money back. Again, we just put it together and said, isn't it a funky, cool little place? And when we knew there would be a lot of people moving around, you can just slide the door over, have your conversation on the podcast. It's not like perfect, but it's again, like everything here, it's 90% okay. Are you kidding me? It's so cool. Like there's microphones set up, the lighting is awesome. The, the fact that the steering wheel and the dash and everything is still in there. Yep. You know, when I got inside, I'm like, this is so roomy. You can actually have probably up to six people comfortably in there. It's not bad. If you open the door too fast, it hits the rear wheel and stuff. But the, the idea with this was it was just a cool little, because what's actually behind there is a fridge door, because we mentioned that it's a refrigerator, and there's a 20 foot drop behind it. So we were like, do we trust that people will just not open that door and fall out? So we said, let's put this in, in the way. And it just fit the area perfectly. And I think the patina to me makes it look cooler. And we put a few stickers on it. We can give it a kick, it doesn't matter. And it's like a nice little, I don't know, with everything being so shiny and presented, this is like a bit of like, don't take it too seriously. You can still make something cool for cheap. Drift Games is not the only car culture focused business in this facility, which is appropriately named the Engine Block. It's literally a block of businesses that cater to the Irish motoring community. There's a classic dealership, a restoration shop, a world-class detailer, and even a motorcycle shop, plus much, much more. Drift Games is located up on the second floor, so they built a huge car elevator just to move their cars around. So in the US, 
there's a novelty with driving a right-hand drive car. <laughs> I noticed you have a couple left-hand drive cars here. Is that kind of the same thing for you guys? You know what, it's, I would say US cars here, not a huge culture, but I've always had a big love for US cars. I mean, when I go to US events, I'm looking at the trucks in the car park even more than the JDM cars because they're so different. And I think that's the thing. If you, you never see them your whole life, then you want them. So the Corvette for me was a car that I think Matt Field had just built his, and I was like, that looks super cool. And it's also a sports car drifting as opposed to a coupe trying to be a sports car or whatever. So I like just the lines. We built it version one, uh, full HGK. We're so lucky to have HGK in Europe, so it's cheaper for us to buy stuff from Latvia. We did all carbon fiber. Uh, this has an LS3, built LS3. It has a Samsona sequential, Winters quick change on the back and all the steering wheel controls are all buttons on the steering wheel, which is unusual for a drift car, which the wheel spins a lot. And then, that was version one, and, and that was great, Larry. Everyone was fine, because there was only two or three drift Corvettes in the world. Then, 7,000 people built drift Corvettes, including a friend of mine, Axel, who put a three-rotor in the car, which is there this weekend. Mine looked very ordinary all of a sudden. So I sent the car to Dara McNamara at Group D and I said, can you make this look like the most ridiculous Pikes Peak sort of crazy car in the world? Something Batman would drive if he did track days. And Darren showed me nothing for five months. <laughs> and I arrived and this is what rolled out of the shed. And he said, I went as far as I would go. He even said he went further than he did on his own cars with just how wild it looks. And I think it just, it's just like nothing else. It's almost like a piece of art that he's made out of aluminium and bits and pieces. But it's a lot of time and thinking and making the car balanced. And Darren was trying to make every part of every line make sense along the car. Most of it's completely non-functional, like there's just winglets and things that don't do anything. But it was to give that almost like if a kid came up to the car, he would just go, wow. And that was the whole point. It was just, it's a totally like function like even probably bad for function for a drift car. We've already had issues where if you're driving in the rain, the water just comes up on your windscreen and <laughs> things like that. But it looks cool and that's what I wanted it to be because I'm not the best drifter in the world. So if you're gonna be kind of mediocre at it, you might as well look really cool doing it. So that's kind of what I wanted to do was just make people smile because it's such a silly car. I we had to that. refabricate the whole back end of the car just to take the weight of the aero. So <laughs> it's, it's a fun car, but it it's also drives really good. It's, got, it's a pro car, but... Um, I just like how raw it is. And every time I come in here in the morning and I see it, I just go, what a silly thing to exist in the drift world. So then we actually have quite the history. Last time I was here in Ireland at Mandela Park was 11 years ago. Making us feel old now, Larry. It, it, you it know doesn't what? feel like 11 years. It doesn't feel like it, but it was just so cool to be here to shoot. Dai Yoshihara, yep. Frederick Osbo, Dean Kearney. James Dean was yep. driving his SR-powered FD, I think. It was red. Right? Yep. Darren McNamara. Pre Falcon. Yeah, just so many people that we came up with in terms of like the car culture world. We were all there at that event. I had no idea where we were going with it at the time. So like for me, that was my second ever event, emceeing an event. Thought that would be my last. I was like, oh, you know, nice little experience to have. Got the bug, came in, did more gigs. Still have no idea how we've got this far or why any of this exists. But amazing to think that where all of those people at that event have gone on to do things from Dean Carney to James to Freddie to all those people and you've obviously done so much around the world that it's crazy that this event's kind of bringing us all back in together again 11 years later the same the same crew the same heads yeah so let's talk about this event so this event may be the biggest Ireland car culture event of all time well last year we did the LZ festival which we called it which is an event that me and Adam just had a conversation in the US and said wouldn't it be cool to bring all the best of Europe guys out with all the kind of, say, you know, well-known uh, content creators, put them all together, see what happens. Expected like it would be a fun event. It did more spectators than any drift event in the history of Europe. I mean, all of Europe? All of Europe. Okay. So we, we were like, okay, well now we can't just do one. So then we said this year, 
we'll up it again. We'll bring some more people, build some cars specifically for the event. And because the competition element of it is all for show, even though it's a comp, we can put in silly cars, that, like James Dean's building a four-roader. He's never going to compete in a four-roader, but this is the perfect event to come and just put a show on for the fans. So it gave another little avenue. It's almost like a very unprofessional Goodwood Festival of Speed for drifters and content creators kind of style. You know what I like to call it? I like to call it the Car YouTube Olympics. <laughs> That's a very accurate statement. <laughs> it's like everybody's gathered in some location, yeah. whether it be Florida or, you know, this weekend it's uh, in Ireland. Yeah. And then another weekend it's going to be Australia. Another weekend it's going to be in Toronto. Canada, right? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's like, and also though, you've got some legitimacy, like you've got the guys who just finished first and second in Drift Masters in Finland still competing at it. So you get the pros, you get the guys starting off, all these different stories and journeys, and then we bunch of cool cars, like in the show cars that are there. And the Irish scene, they build these cars and they have so much passion, but because Ireland's quite remote, to have you guys come and see what they've been building for the last 10 years, they bring the best of the best out. So it's really fun, they really appreciate let's say the international audience seeing their creations for a weekend. So it's great for the Irish car scene. 11 years ago when I came to Mandela Park for Pro Drift, I was able to kind of see a good snapshot of what the drifting scene was like at the time in Ireland. But this weekend's event is more of a global event. Yeah. And it is just so cool that it's come to this point that we have this many people that are interested in this sport. Ireland has just always had that passion for drifting. It helps because we have really good guys at it. But, and, and again, a sport I think does grow with success. And you see that in Finland with uh, Kali Rovanperä, the WRC champion. People get behind a sport they're very good at. We always had really good drifters. But we always had a very passionate car. And obviously we got uh, a lot of imports way earlier than the US did or anyone else because we're right hand drive. There was no law against it, so we had S15s, or 34s 20 years ago. So there was always a bubbling culture, but I think what they really like here is that they've always been doing this, but now we've got a little bit more, let's say, eyeballs on, which keeps the scene stronger. It gives them a reward for all their builds that you guys come and check them out. So there's so many excited people coming this weekend for you guys to see the creations over the last five or six years, and it keeps a scene strong here, and also they get to meet their heroes, which I love seeing all throughout the weekend. Tour may be the first successful worldwide drift series and it's different in that Adam actually created this event just because he wanted to drive cool tracks all over the world with his friends. As always I love getting behind the wheel of a chase vehicle to do some really close filming at speed. Unfortunately it was pretty tough to source a vehicle but Jake Crouch actually reached out to me on Instagram and told me that he has a spare E92 Nurburgring track tool for me to use. He also trailered his R32 all the way from the UK just for this event. All right, so we are in the 365 Performance E92 M3 and we're at Mondello Park in Ireland. I've never chased drift cars in a right-hand drive. I just can't believe I'm doing it here at Mondello Bar at LZ Fest. It's so cool, it's such an honor. Apparently, this is the first time anybody's really done proper chase car stuff here at Mondello, so I'm actually excited to see the footage and see how it comes out.
Unfortunately, in true Irish fashion, it rained on us pretty much the entire time. So unfortunately, Friday practice was pretty much the only opportunity that I had a chance to drive and film the vehicles at speed. Despite the terrible weather, people from all over the world, especially Europe, came just to check out the event. There were so many world-class drivers, world-class show cars. We made a ton of new friends and we met so many new people. This may have been the grandest motorsport festival that Mandela Park has ever seen. I just can't wait to go to another LZ World Tour event.